Hey guys, I'm here with Danielle, and we do this after chapel all the time, you know that. But I just wanted to ask her a few things about what she learned from chapel today, and kind of what the main point was. I kind of tuned out. Did you? I didn't hear anything that you said. So she was like most of you. So let me go to a quick <laughs> recap in case you were just like Danielle and that turkey was still kicking in from Thanksgiving. Oh. What do you want to talk about? Okay, so I'm here with Chris Brown. He's crazy, but he's awesome. And he shared with us this morning a little bit. But first, I want you to tell us a little bit about your impressions of GCU, why you said yes to coming to speak here. Because every time I watch my favorite sports and TV shows, your commercials are all over San Diego. <laughs> and I didn't know what type of cult this was, but I know you're trying to reach the young minds and brains in our area. Yeah. So I wanted to come see for myself. And we got several students from our church coming here saying oh, good cool. stuff. So I've got a 13-year-old and an 11-year-old. So somewhere down the road, I got to start thinking college, and I can't afford real private schools. Okay. So I thought I'd come to a fake one. Smart. <laughs> All right, tell us a little bit about what you were hoping students would take away as they're leaving chapel this morning. A uh, good nap, plenty of rest, get them ready for their classes and the rest of the day. And they, they, I accomplished that with you. Yeah, with me, one. For those of you that were looking to actually learn something, <laughs> unlike my friend Danielle here, uh, I think my hope was is just so many times we have these talks about all you have to do is pray to God and God's going to help you and God's... And yet we don't read scriptures mm. of a God that says, no, 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 you've got to be walking with me. You know, we don't call God to walk with us. We're called to walk with him. Mm. Uh, and John 15, that famous Last Supper, upper room, 12 mm -hmm. guys on one side of the table, great painting, but lousy seating arrangement. Um, <laughs> In that night, uh, right before Jesus goes to the garden, knowing he's going to go to the cross, he's told them three times. He tells them in that dinner, guys, I need you to remain. Remain, 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 remain. Hmm. Eleven times, and I think it's like 12 verses or 13 verses, he sits with the disciples. He doesn't say, here's how to use me, here's how to pray to me, here's how to have great faith. He just says, guys, your goal is to remain in me. And he goes, I'm the vine, you're the branch. And apart from me, you can't do it. Mm. And, and I think we get that wrong. We try to live our lives and think he's supposed to come in and rescue us. When he goes, you're never supposed to be apart from me. Mm. It's the same thing at the end of it, when the disciples all run, they don't remain, yeah. but they run for their life. He shows up on the seashore in John 21, and he just asks Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? He doesn't ask about why do you deny me? Here's the sin issue in your life. Here's all you got to go overcome. He just says, look, do you love me? Mm. He goes, if you remain in me and you love me, he goes, we got everything else taken care of. Mm. And so I think the purpose of today and watching the battle was Israel did what so many of us Christians do. We call on God. We want God to fix our problems. And that's the problem. They're our problems. They're not his because we're living life without him. Mm. Well, there's a whole nother message. Yeah, seriously. So if you missed chapel, <laughs> there you go. You didn't have to show up. Or if you had a good nap, now you got it both. Oh, one more quick question for Chris. Okay. Uh, you're clearly gifted at bringing scripture to life. We have a lot of students here who feel like, I read the Bible and, and how, how do I capture it in a way that applies to me? So maybe share a little bit about how that's looked in your oh, life. Oh, I'd love to. Passion of mine. Uh, for 23 years, the Bible was the most boring book in the world. Mm. If you can't sleep at night, crack the word of God. Within a page, you're out cold like she was in chapel um, because we read it as ancient literature we read it as print on paper and we forget there's real people real time real places and so what I encourage people to do is stop reading the Bible but see it um, see it in 3d read a passage and, and if you're trying to read through the Bible in a year you got to read five or six chapters a day I get that but for most of us just read one short story one passage and stop and look at it and ask yourself who are the people what's happening there what are the emotions in the passage go there walk the college Stone. Put your back up against the small brick walls or adobe. Watch the man being lowered through the ceiling and the astonishment when Jesus said his sins are forgiven. I mean, they're real time, real people, real places. And the, the lens of scripture, like we saw today, gives us everything to walk into the scene. And then just ask yourself, um, if that's the way God dealt with people then, that's the way he deals with me today. And what's it telling me? And if you want to go even beyond that, if that's how Jesus dealt with people then, how am I supposed to deal with people mm. today? But I tell people, stop reading scripture, start watching. That's really good. Uh, Chris, thanks for being with us today. And for those of you uh, who missed chapel, uh, we'll be here next week with another Chapel Rewind. <laughs>